Welcome everybody, we are welding 16 gauge galvanized sheet with 035 silicon bronze wire and using 100% argon gas utilizing this tapered nozzle. Warning, warning, extreme travel speed. Let's see that again. When the whistle go. What is going on everybody? It is a fantastic day because I am bringing you a new video and this video is on MIG brazing. So if you Google search or YouTube search brazing in general, about 70% of those videos are TIG brazing. So I'm bringing you MIG brazing and we're going to be talking about four different things. The first one is what type of applications fit MIG brazing. And then what are the advantages and disadvantages of MIG brazing? Because yes, there are pros and cons to everything. So we gotta let them out of the bag. Uh, what is MIG brazing? Isn't it just welding? So we're gonna be talking about that. And the fourth thing, I'm gonna be taking a variety of applications and I'm gonna be doing live demos at the end where if you're in a garage or your shop or at work, and you get these applications in, well now you know how to utilize MIG brazing. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you're existing, give me a thumbs up because I do appreciate it. Now let's start talking about those applications. Automotive manufacturing use a mixture of MIG brazing and laser brazing with silicon bronze on galvanized and high strength steels, usually on side panels or tailgates. The uh, second application is overlay of stainless steel shafts, anything with prop uh, buildup, corrosion resistant application, uh, applications with bearing surfaces. They use an aluminum bronze for the buildup on bearing surfaces. The third one is auto body and repair. Uh, you see a lot of galvanized material, um, so you see a lot of slot and plug welds, but also open root uh, butt joints. Uh, artwork is another um, use of silicon bronze. You can see some of this artwork here. Puts a lot of gold color. People like the feel of that. And the fifth is uh, HVAC. So a lot of galvanized material here, less fume generation. And last but not least is dissimilar metals like cast. Uh, you can weld stainless steel to cast, uh, like this picture here, but also you can weld bronze and copper and so on. As you can tell, there's a variety of applications out there for MIG brazing. You know, maybe you're in a job shop and you see a variety of those already, or maybe you're in the auto body sector and you didn't realize that you could use a brazing wire for overlay. I thought that was one of the coolest applications, at least from what I've seen uh, out in the industry. But let's get into the advantages and disadvantages of MIG brazing. Silicon bronze has a melting temperature of around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, where mild steel has a melting temperature around 2700 degrees. So you're going to get less heat input in the part, but also you can weld thin gauge materials anywhere from 18 to 28 gauge. So if you're welding high strength steels or ultra high strength steels where you need to look at total heat input or heat effective zones in the part, you know, silicon bronze can be an advantage, but also like tolerances. So you get a very good gap bridgeability benefit out of silicon bronze due to the melting temperature and the way it flows. And I would say the best application would be galvanized material, but you can also weld copper, cast, brass, and bronze. The first disadvantage definitely costs, you know, silicon bronze or aluminum bronze is going to be anywhere from eight to $12 a pound where standard solid wires could be 80 cents to $3 a pound. So there is a big difference in cost. Uh, feedability, um, it is a very soft wire, just like aluminum. So you're going to need a special inner liner, a short lead or a Teflon inner liner or a push pull gun. Cause you don't want to be fighting bird's nests or burn backs. Uh, material thickness, you are limited on thickness due to strength. So I always say around three millimeters or less. So you're talking about eighth inch or less. And the last disadvantage, you're going to have a lower tensile strength versus solid wire. 
So with silicon bronze, the minimum, you're somewhere around 50,000 PSI. That's pounds per square inch. And with solid wire, you're somewhere around 70 PSI, pounds per square inch. So there's a big difference in tensile strength. The question of the day is MIG brazing really welding? And I think the way we can do that is by looking up the definition of weld or welding. What's that? You already looked it up? And you wrote it down? Thanks. Appreciate it. So my significant other, she already wrote down uh, what weld is in regards to definition. So weld is joined together metal pieces or parts by heating surfaces to the point of melting and uniting them. Thank you. So uniting them, right? I call that fusion. So when you're joining two pieces of material together with a filler wire and you're combining them, that is what we're looking for when we're MIG welding, and that is called fusion. Take a look at the arrows at the point when fusion takes place, when the filler wire and the base metals combine. So with MIG brazing, we're not actually fusing because the melting temperature of that wire is so low that we're not fusing all three of those together, but what we are doing is we're taking them together and we're bonding them together. So the strength is from the uh, wire itself that bond and sometimes in certain applications that bond is just as strong as a normal mig weld it just depends on your thickness and what type of material here's a cross section of silicon bronze on an open root butt joint you notice you can still see the edges of the plate and all three aren't melted together so there is no fusion how does it create that bond what it does is it creates what we call a capillary action is the movement of liquid through or along material against opposing force such as gravity? We are using the Fronius multi-process machines behind me and we're going to be welding with silicon bronze. Uh, the other spool of wire is aluminum bronze. We're going to be using that on the Transseal 2200 because it is a 10 pound spool. All the wire was provided to me by Safra. Let's get this show on the road so you can figure out how you can utilize MIG brazing in your shop, at work, or in the garage. Let's go. The question of the day, do you drag silicon bronze or do you push silicon bronze? So I'm going to tell you, you need to push silicon bronze, but let's show you a drag position versus a push position. So here we got the push. The arc's going to be more stable in a push. It's going to put less heat in the part as well. So here's a drag, and here's a push. We are using CUSI-3, which is silicon bronze, in the O35 wire size with 100% argon gas. It is 60 thousandths galvanized plate, so we're going to be around 93 amps at 250 inches per minute wire feed speed and 14.8 volts. Now, this is a lap joint. I'm gonna increase my inductance about uh, 2.0. This is gonna soften it out so it's not as aggressive. Uh, I'm trying not to get any spatter on this part. So I did my little test swing just to make sure I can complete the weld, but listen to it. Very soft, not, not producing a lot of spatter at all. And what I'm doing is I'm washing down to the bottom plate and up to the top. It's a little slight weave pattern, not too much just to make sure I'm washing on both plates. But uh, very stable, the settings seemed about right, looks nice. We're gonna run the same weld parameters as far as wire feed speed, volts, wire type, wire diameter, gas, but we're gonna run an open root butt joint similar to auto body collision repair, but put it in spot mode. So a spot mode, you push and hold the left button and then hit the right one and it brings you in the menu. In here, you can set how long the arc stays on and off for. So SPB is how long the arc stays off. So for 0.5 seconds, it'll stay off. And then SPT is how long it'll stay on. 
hold down the left button, hit the right one, let go. Now you're back to the main menu. So this open root butt joint would be very similar to auto body, like I already said. I got a 332 opening in it, and the arc is staying on for 0.5 seconds, then off for 0.5 seconds. So this helps with open root butt joints like this. Also for thin gauge materials, but you can see the bonding on the backside. So the silicon bronze is bonding to the backside of the plate. This is primo capillary action. So you remember capillary action? This is what it's doing here. We are gonna stay with silicon bronze, 035, 100% argon gas, but we are welding 60,000 miles steel to quarter inch stainless. It's at 114 amps. We're gonna bump it up to 290 inches per minute. 16.5 volts. We're gonna increase the inductance to 2.5 because we don't want any spatter that's gonna stick on the stainless steel because it is thick to thin. Uh, this is one of the big benefits of silicon bronze is welding dissimilar metals, or not welding, brazing dissimilar metals. But uh, so this is steel to stainless. You can do cast to stainless. If you're not sure of the base material, you know you can use uh, silicon bronze for that. But check out the puddle very smooth we don't have any spatter it's consistent the toes are washing in really well um you know you can ask for any more on this you know it's it's doing its job i was excited to get the opportunity to include this on my video so one of my friends has this old cast iron pump that he wants to use in his house for decoration so i'm gonna use silicon bronze on it but i'm gonna clean it up on both front and back but i'm also going to put a bevel on it to make sure that the silicon bronze bonds to the front and back now with cast iron it is prone to cracking so you always want to put a preheat on it at least to 150 200 degrees sometimes more most people will uh, weld this with like a nye rod or a nickel base stick rod but i'm using silicon bronze because it's not structural i'm just going to grind it off paint it black call it good hang it on the wall but it, it's, uh, it welded, it brazed nice. I always keep saying welded, but it brazed nice, you know. I'm not getting a lot of spatter at all. Silicon bronze laid in there really smooth. And the grind, I didn't get any impurities on it at all. So it was ready for paint. Ding, ding. We're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna run aluminum bronze, which is C-U-A-L, but we're gonna run it on the C-U-S-I, but it is 040 wire. We're using 100% argon gas. I'm gonna use uh, about 160 inches per minute wire feed speed at 15.1 volts and 2.5 on the inductance to keep it nice and soft with no spatter. Now this is 60 thousandths mild steel. I'm gonna run an outside corner. And the reason why I'm doing this is anybody that's doing artwork, this wire is gonna give you a really goldish finish. And if you're doing something where you're looking for that, well, this is a viable option. So it runs really smooth and puts out a gold, 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 gold finish. We're staying with aluminum bronze and we're again on CUSI, 040 wire diameter and 100% argon gas. I'm bumping my wire up to 220 inches a minute at 16 volts and our inductance is 2.5. So we're going to do an overlay on stainless steel, quarter inch stainless. I'm going to preheat it. Now this would be an exact replica of what someone would possibly do on an overlaid surface. So stainless steel 304. Uh, this would be a like a bearing surface. So anything that has some type of abrasion or wear on stainless, you would use the copper aluminum for something like this, or you'd use it for like prop buildup, like on edges. I just wanted to show you what it would look like. So that way maybe you could compare apples to apples, but I would say 95% of the applications out there, brazing wise, you're gonna use silicon bronze, which is the CUSI-3. But in case you're doing overlay, this is an option. Let's not sit around and talk anymore. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah! I wanna be a baller. Shot collar, 20 inch blades on the Impala. Yeah!